Hi Pre-Calculus, today we are going to talk about the reciprocal trig graphs. We've already talked about cosine, sine, and tan. Today we're going to talk about secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So let's just do a quick reminder here. When we're talking about the graph of cosine, oh, I did that up too far. <coughs> um, we've got a point here at 0, 1, a point at 0, pi over 2, um, and a point down here at 0, pi. And then again at 0, negative 2 in here. So our graph looks something like this. And we know that that would continue on. At sine, we start at 0, 0. Then at pi over 2, we've got a point at 1. At pi, we've got a point at 0. And at negative pi over 2, we've got a point at negative 1. At pi, we've got here. So our, this graph looks more like this. And at tangent, we've got, remember, those horizontal asymptotes. So we've got one at pi over 2 um, and one at negative pi over 2. And um, our tangent kind of goes from up, down, from right to left. So it's going to look kind of like this. Oops, sorry, I should start at pi there. But anyway, down like that. Okay, so when we're talking about secant, the period of secant, remember, is 2 pi over b. And we can think of secant, I shouldn't have written that there. We can think of secant as 1 over cosine theta, right? So when is the cosine of theta equal to 0? Well, the cosine of theta is equal to 0 at pi over 2 okay, and negative pi over 2. And then also, um, if I had all the way out here, 3 pi over 2, which I guess would be like right there, then I would have 1 there too. These graphs I didn't draw out that far, but anyway. So that's where we're at 0. That's where we're going to have our vertical asymptote because it's undefined there. Then we remember here we have a point on our cosine graph. We would have a point there, a point uh, here, and now what am I doing? That's, I drew that wrong, but anyway, it's right here at pi and here at negative pi, okay? And so this, where it was a maximum, now it's a minimum. And our cos, our, cos, our secant graph is going to go up like that and down like that. So our minimums become maximums, our maximums become minimums, okay? Let's talk about cosecant. So cosecant is 1 over the sine of theta. And we want to think, when is the th sine of theta 0? Well, it's 0 here, right? It's 0 at pi. It's 0 at negative pi, okay? Here, we have a maximum at pi over 2, okay? So at pi over 2, I'll put a point. Here, at negative pi over 2, I'm going to put a, pi a point, okay? This was a minimum. Now it's a maximum. This was a maximum, now it's a minimum. Okay, good. And cotangent is actually even easier. So co cotangent is one over tangent of theta. And what is the tangent of theta zero? Well, remember here the period is pi over b. Actually, pi over b, that's our period. Oh, I just ran out of room. Anyway, we'll do our best here. So when is uh, pi, when is tangent of theta zero? Well, it's zero at pi at uh, zero and at pi. And tangent is just gonna go, or cotangent, sorry, is just gonna go backwards. Why did I do that? It should go through zero. Stupid, okay, right here, goes through zero. There we go. Okay, not a great drawing, but hopefully you get it. Okay, so here we're asked to identify the amplitude, period, vertical shift, phase shift, and then graph y equals cosecant of 1 half times x plus pi over 4. So our amplitude here is 1. Okay, Our period is 2 pi over b, which is equal to 2 pi over 1 half, which is just 4 pi. Right? Our vertical shift, we have none. And our phase shift, we're going left pi over 4, okay? So 
for cosecant, well, first we want to think cosecant is 1 over sine theta, right? So let's think of our sine graph. So at sine, we would usually start at 0, 0. So, uh, and this is going to be positive. So I'm just going to go up like that, right? And then, um, so our period is pi over 4. So halfway at pi over 2, I go here. And at uh, negative, that's going down. And then at negative 2 pi, I said pi over 2, but I meant 2 pi, going down again, okay? So now, where would we have a point at? Well, we would have a point at pi, uh, pi 1, and at negative pi, negative 1, right? Well, I need to shift everything left, pi over 4, so I can put a point there, I can put a point there, and where I had those zeros, I'm going to put my vertical axes, okay? Okay. I didn't even draw it in the right spot, but hopefully you get the idea. Remember, this is what our sine graph would have looked like. So now our cosecant graph is going to go up, and then and there should be a vertical axis over here, down. Okay, beautiful. All right, let's do another one. Y equals negative 2 secant of 2x minus pi minus 1. Well, that's going to be the same as negative 2 times the secant of 2 times x minus pi over 2, okay, minus 1. So our amplitude is 2. The period is 2 pi over 2, which is just equal to pi. The vertical shift is down 1, and the phase shift is right pi over 2, okay? And secant we can think of as 1 over cosine theta. Okay, so if it's 1 over cosine theta, our amplitude, we would start at um, 0, 2, right? Put a little point there. And then since our period is pi, we would have a point here at pi, point here at 2 pi, point here at negative pi, point here at negative 2 pi. And then in between, I would go down to, down to, down to, right there, and down to. Okay, so uh, that's what that would look like. Well, where is cosine of theta equal to zero? Well, it's equal at those uh, in-between points here, right? But we're shifting pi over two, so that's going to be, so here would be zero, zero but pi over two is over here. So actually that's just gonna be the exact same shift, but like, um, whereas here there would be a point now, one second, okay. So now there would actually be a point here and a point here. I'm gonna erase these, a point here, a point here, and erase that, okay? And then pi, what is it? Right, right pi over 2. So point here, point here. Let's erase these. Okay. Point here, point here. Erase these. And right here. Okay. So hopefully these erase marks are not great, but we're kind of getting the idea, right? Okay. So we've got that. The other thing I forgot to do was shift down 1. So let's do that. We're going to shift everything down 1. We've got a point there point there. Is it here that I wanted one? Yeah. Nope. Not there. I wanted it here. Negative pi, negative 2 pi, pi, 2 pi. Okay. And then here at 3 pi over 2. Oops. Down one. Sorry. 2 pi, pi over 2. Mm. Okay. So let's draw our asymptotes here. We've got one between, gosh, this is such a mess. But hopefully you would erase better than me and you would get kind of the idea. All right. All right, ugh, ugly the way I drew it out, but Anyway, that's the general idea. All right, let's do two more. All right, here we have y equals the cotangent of one half x plus pi over two. Why turn the page? So this is equal to 
uh, the cotangent of 1 half times x plus pi over 4. Okay. So our amplitude is 1. Our period is pi over uh, 1 half, which is just 2 pi, right? Remember our period is pi over b for tangent and cotangent. Okay. Vertical shift, we have none. And phase shift, we have left pi over 4. So for cotangent, for tangent, we would usually have when this is the same, remember we're thinking that this is 1 over tangent of theta, right? So when is tangent of theta 0? Well, tangent of theta is 0 here at 0, 0 at pi, at negative pi, I did those backwards, at 2 pi, at negative 2 pi, right? And we have to go left. What did I say? Uh, left pi over 4. But since this is a period of 2 pi, right, we're really going to shift this out um, way more. So we would have a vertical asymptote here, a vertical asymptote here, and a vertical asymptote here. Okay. And then for our cotangent, we're going to have a point here. Uh, since this was our amplitude, oh, we're going to go left 2 up 1, down 1, right 2, and we'll have a point here. Oops, not there. 2, down 1, right 2. Okay, and we can draw this out. Nice stretched out cotangent graph. Okay, let's draw our last one here. 3 times the cosecant of x plus pi plus 1. Well, the amplitude here is 3. The period is 2 pi over 1, which is just 2 pi. That's nice and easy. Vertical shift is up 1, and phase shift is left pi. Okay? So, if our amplitude is 3, well, first of all, let's do our vertical shift up 1. We should always start with that. I didn't start with it earlier, but I should have. Okay. So, vertical shift up 1. Our amplitude is 3. We're thinking of this as 1 over sine, right? So for sine, we would start at 0, 0. Our amplitude is 3, so 1, 2, 3. Okay, this would be, uh, no, we're going to start here. Sorry, start here at 0, 0. And then uh, our period is 2 pi, so we would have another up here, up here, and we would go down at negative pi and down at pi. But we have a phase shift of left pi, so... That means that this is actually going to go up, okay? This is going to go down. This is going to go down. This is going to go up. This is going to go down, okay? And then we would put our points there, right? So if this is going down, we're going down how much? Three. So one, two, three. And we're going up three. One, two, three. Down three. One, two, three, up three, one, two, three, okay? Um, and we need to do those vertical asymptotes where we have those dashes at earlier. Okay. And we can draw our cosecant graph. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and you're kind of getting the hang of these. Um, if you have questions, please bring them to class and I'll see you then. Thanks, bye.